This is ABC 15 Mornings. The holiday weekend is almost here. If you are unvaccinated, um, we would recommend not traveling. The CDC sending out a warning. The cost of lumber. During that time, uh, you saw a lot of prices continue to, to soar up. Prices are dropping, so is now the time to build. A surprise delivery. Why a snake born at the Phoenix Zoo was unexpected by everyone. Rain making a return. The monsoon not done with us just yet. And on that note, if you're a little sleepy this morning, you might be thinking, well, why? It could have to do with some of the rocking and rolling we did see across the valley last night into these early morning hours. Absolutely. Monsoon 2021 not letting go just yet. Our ABC 15 live drive out in the rain on the left of Loop 202 heading eastbound near Country Club. And on the right hand side, that's a Loop 101 heading southbound towards Tempe. We've got a couple of live drives working hard for you. We do want to get you over to our Iris or Masia, who has been well out ahead of this to make sure we are prepared. So if you're commuting in the East Valley, that's specifically the area of focus for the rain this morning. If you're waking up with us in Central Phoenix or the West Valley, you're all quiet right now. Not to say that we don't have a chance for a few spotty showers in those areas, but it's dry from Glendale to Goodyear to Surprise. But you'll notice that's not the case in the East Valley. I'm not seeing any lightning, so you're likely not here hearing any thunder in the East Valley, but essentially these showers that are producing some heavier downpours from about Tempe to Mesa to Chandler and then up into areas to the northeast of there as these showers slowly track towards some of that higher terrain. Right now it's coming down a little harder in areas around Tempe, the US 60 and the Loop 101 interchange. Again, you're looking for those pockets of yellow and orange, even red to indicate where some of that heavier rain is and it's essentially focused from Tempe to Mesa right now with some light showers moving through Chandler and Gilbert. Another area of heavy rain down near the Santan Valley and in fact this is the first lightning strike I'm seeing here just popping up right over the Santan Valley with some heavy rain moving there and that's moving into an area that's surrounded by this green polygon where a flood advisory remains in place after overnight rainfall could have led to some ponding water on the roadways specifically along the US 60. So a heads up if you're in that region near the Santan Valley or Queen Creek some heavy rain a little bit of lightning and thunder and that is moving into an area again that's under a flood advisory with some more pop up showers heading towards that higher terrain. Now areas from Fountain Hills to Apache Junction and then points to the east of there over some of that higher terrain remain under flash flood watches and that's where the greatest concern is going to continue to be for flash flooding as we go through the morning. For the rest of the valley, no flash flood watches, but we've got to watch for some wet roads, especially in the East Valley as our temperature sits at 75 degrees. Our best chance for rain between now and about mid morning, I think between now and about 10 a.m. After that, we're dry Drying things out more sunshine this afternoon with one more day in the 90s topping out at 97 today. Then it's getting hotter. We'll talk about that holiday weekend forecast and that full seven day still ahead. Megan Thompson, though, has been keeping a close eye on this morning drive as the rain comes down in parts of the Phoenix area. Iris, I'm listening to you very, very closely because usually where you're tracking that rain is where I start to track those issues. Now we do have some in the Phoenix area where I know you say we aren't seeing that much rain, but still the in impact of some of those issues out on the roadways. The I-17 southbound near the stack. We do have multiple vehicles off to the right, causing some slowing in that area. As we go to the maps, take a look at all that red and orange building because you're going down towards the stack. So the I-17 southbound from the 101 to the stack with that desert drive time is right around 23 minutes. So your speeds are dropping significantly due to that crash. But moving into the East Valley where that rain is coming down, we're seeing multiple crashes in this area. So let me walk you through it. US 60 westbound near Rural Road. We have a crash in that area. Your speed's picking up a little bit. They're likely able to get that one out of the way, out of the travel lanes. Loop 202 westbound near the 101. The Santan Freeway, we have a crash. And the I-10 westbound near Queen Creek Road near the 347. We have a crash on those lanes too. So I'll keep you posted on the East Valley specifically as soon as any crashes pop up. Nick and Kaylee. Megan, we'll check back in with you in just a little bit. Meantime, the three-day weekend is almost here, which means a lot of us will be taking a short trip somewhere. But just like last year, we are still, in, still dealing with this pandemic. And our Mark Thompson joins us now talking about travel and what the CDC is telling some people. Yeah, Kaylee, uh, good morning to you. We are live here at Sky Harbor Airport. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward and simple. If you are not vaccinated against the virus, stay home. That is the message from the CDC where we are with disease um, transmission right now, um, we would say that um, people need to take their own these risks into their own consideration as they think about traveling. 
Now, people who are fully vaccinated can travel, but should take precautions. And when it comes to gathering with friends and family this holiday weekend, the CDC says staying outdoors with others who are vaccinated will help prevent the spread of COVID-19. And when indoors in public places, wear a mask, whether you're vaccinated or not. Top U.S. health officials continue to say vaccination is the best way to protect yourself against the virus. Talk with family and friends who are still unvaccinated about the benefits of the vaccine and continue to consider taking them to get vaccinated over the long holiday weekend. More than 101,000 people are hospitalized nationwide and average daily COVID deaths are now topping 1,300. That's more than doubling since mid-August. And of course, there are now growing concerns about the number of children who are hospitalized. In fact, they say that they're being hospitalized at a rate that we haven't seen in more than a year. Again, that is data from the CDC. Reporting live this morning from Sky Harbor Airport, Mark Thompson, ABC 15 Arizona. I'll send it back to you. Yeah, we know a lot of people are eager to travel and get out, Mark. It's, I think, a matter of assessing your personal risk and, and what you feel comfortable with. Maricopa County offering new incentives to get vaccinated. The Board of Supervisors approving a plan to give county workers $100 and a day off if they're fully vaccinated by October 31st. All part-time, full-time, and contract employees are eligible for this. Meantime, it's the video you're going to see all day. New York City underwater this morning. What's left of Ida bringing historic flooding there. There's been at least eight deaths attributed to the storm. Cars submerged there, homes flooded, and water pouring into the subway system. The National Weather Service reports Central Park saw more than three inches of rain in just an hour. The governors of New York and New Jersey both declaring states of emergency. There was even a tornado reported, and many people are still without power this morning. And flash flooding here closer to home, northern Arizona. It is forcing an elementary school to close for good. Students at Killip Elementary in Flagstaff, they are in remote learning through tomorrow. Next week, they're going to move to a temporary spot. Now, there were already plans to retire the school in May, and a new building is under construction. It's next door, but it is built there in a flood path. And the principal is saying they're right now they're working with engineers on a best fix. We're still working on that. We are still trying to determine which is the best type of drainage system. As of right now, it is not clear if anything inside uh, that flood damaged school can be salvaged. Well, forks up Sun Devils. ASU football is back. The team taking on Southern Utah in the season opener. Hopefully that'll put a smile on your face this morning. Kickoff happens at 7. Game traffic, though, it could mix things up for you at rush hour, and that could mean some big delays for you. Our Megan Thompson has some alternates for us all important Megan because uh, you don't want to get snagged up, right? You want to make sure you're in that seat just in time. Absolutely. You have to be ready to cheer on our home team. So this is our traffic map showing us the Loop 202 Red Mountain and Rural Road. That's where that beautiful Sun Devil Stadium is. Some travel impacts surrounding that area will start about five hours prior to kickoff, so very, very early in the day today. So if you live in this area or if you're going to the game, here's what you need to know. Veterans Way between 6th Street and College Avenue will be closed again five hours prior to kickoff. Also, College Avenue between 6th and 7th Streets. So Nick and Kaylee, the Tempe officials, they're really recommending that people take some of their free shuttle services. They take the bus, the light rail, maybe walk or scooter or ride their bike. So there's a bunch of different rolling detours like this one. We've put them in this story on ABC15.com. All right, we like the encouragement too to get out and get moving before the game. Tonight, the Sun Devils are going to wear their traditional home uniforms, maroon jerseys with the gold pants. But in just a few weeks, they're going to be showcasing the Valley Heat. You have to see these, these uniforms for their game against Colorado. Yep, forks up there. These Valley Heat reverse retro uniforms, they feature throwback fonts and logos on the jersey and the pants. It is throwback Thursday, by the way. Well, the sun's <laughs> rays on the shoulder are a nod to the Arizona State flag. And Sparky is back there on the helmet. And hopefully Sparky will bring us some more luck this year. The Arizona Diamondbacks giving a first look at their new sports book. With Caesars Entertainment, this place looks cool. It's going to be uh, right there next to Chase Field. It is expected to open early next year. In the meantime, everything is on track for legal sports betting to get underway here in Arizona a week from today. Making a mistake on the work conference call next on ABC 15 mornings, a Zoom meeting mishaps ending up with a lot of pink slips apparently. Plus a lesson in farming, how a new program is allowing kids right here in Arizona to adopt a cow for their classroom. 
and the ABC 15 live drive in Tempe right now where the rain is coming down. This uh, of course there you see near McClintock and we are having to use the windshield wipers as that rain comes down and you will too in parts of the valley. I'm tracking your most accurate forecast after the break. Let's get to our top stories on this Thursday. Today, the Trump Organization's director of security and son of its chief operating officer will testify in front of a grand jury. This is part of an investigation into whether the organization was involved in an alleged tax scheme that lasted more than a decade. Today, attorneys for the former Minneapolis police officers charged in the death of George Floyd will be in court. They will be asking a judge not to allow a live stream of the trial, and they will also address if the jury in this case will remain anonymous. That trial is set to get underway in March. Conditions are expected to improve today for firefighters trying to keep the Calder fire from spreading in Lake Tahoe. It's destroyed hundreds of buildings so far and still threatens thousands more. This fire about 20% contained this morning. A new United Nations report finds weather disasters are happening up to five times more often than we saw back in the 1970s. But thanks to improvements in warnings, disaster management deaths have actually fallen nearly threefold. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time. Sponsored by Accident Law Group. Good morning on this rainy Thursday for some of you. I'm Megan Thompson taking a look at the road conditions for you and the impact that rain is going to have on how long it's going to take you to where you need to go. This is a wide view of those maps where we've combined Iris's weather systems to show us where the rain is falling and also how it may have that impact on your drive. And we're seeing it where the rain is coming down in the East Valley. We have a crash on the I-10 westbound near the 347. Also on the 202 West found right there near the 101. That's the Santan Freeway. We're also seeing speeds drop as we're passing a crash on the Loop 101 southbound near Elliott. There's a live view for you. The good news is this crash has moved off to the right, but you see all of that activity off to the right too, and a pretty bad crash with those front ends smashed of those vehicles. Checking your desert drive time on the US 60 westbound from the 202 to the 10. Your average speed still is looking good. I would suggest slowing down. We only need a little bit of water on the the roadway for you to hydroplane. Your drive time in that area is 17 minutes. On the I-17 southbound, we have a crash at Bethany Home Road and a crash at McDowell Road right there near the stack. That one of the stack is off to the right. So let's check that desert drive time in that area. And also on the I-10 eastbound from the Loop 303 to the mini stack, that about 24 minutes. The 17 southbound where we have those two crashes still looking good this morning in the green at 11 minutes and the 51 southbound from the Loop 101 to the mini stack, 13 minutes for that desert drive time. As we talk about your most accurate forecast, I want to actually take you out to our ABC 15 live drive traveling down the Loop 101 in the East Valley here this morning as we track those wet roads and those windshield wipers. They are going now. The rain's not coming down hard enough to reduce visibility too much, but those roads are wet. And again, you're going to need to give yourself some extra travel time in the East Valley, particularly as that's where the rain is primarily hitting right now. Our road crews, of course, so tra traveling all across the East Valley, keeping an eye out on those conditions. And again, we've seen several of them get caught in the rain as we continue to travel down the Loop 101 and portions of the Loop 202, both Red Mountain and Santan. You're going to see that wide view of Desert Doppler radar. And again, if you're waking up with us in Deer Valley, Central Phoenix, Levine, Goodyear Surprise, you're quiet right now. Still a chance of a stray shower for you, but not likely. It really is going to be areas from about the State Route 51 and even about the Loop 101 into the east where we're going to see the best potential for rain here as we go through the next several hours, but these spotty showers, spotty to scattered showers will continue over the next few hours as they work their way towards the higher terrain. So far, we are seeing some areas of heavy rain, one thunderstorm down near the Santan Valley, but what you're also seeing is a brand new green polygon box, and that is a flood advisory that was just issued minutes ago and will remain in effect until 915 to indicate the threat of at least some minor flooding in some of these areas. No flash flood alerts this morning. Instead, we've got that flood advisory in place to cover those areas in the East Valley that are getting some of that rain this morning. You're noticing the pockets of yellow in Tempe, some pockets of yellow and red in North Mesa and along State Route 87, where we're seeing some of that heavier rain come down. I mentioned some heavier rain and even a thunderstorm, the one that I've seen on the map this morning in the Santan Valley, producing some heavy rain and working its way towards the Northeast, towards Queen Valley and eventually towards the US 60. Another 
pocket of heavy rain near Bartlett Lake, that one moving up towards Sunflower. And essentially, all of that activity that you're seeing in the valley is going to be moving east towards some of that higher terrain. And in that higher terrain is where we do have flash flood watches that remain in effect. You're seeing two types of alerts here on the map. An aviation weather warning near the airport in the southeast valley because of lightning in the area. But the area in the green is a flash flood watch that remains in effect until 10 a.m. for spots like Globe, Roosevelt Lake, Apache Junction, and Fountain Hills. The rest of the valley is not included in this alert, but again, those higher terrain spots are as those are the areas that are going to be most pr prone to flash flooding as we go through the next several hours. This essentially is kind of the last batch of rain before we wind things down here in the valley, and you're going to see as you look at the timestamp, we see that rain chance continue for the next couple of hours. By 10 a.m., things are really shifting east of the valley, and we're starting to clear out those clouds. And for this afternoon, mostly sunny skies here in central Arizona with a chance for some more scattered showers and thunderstorms along the Magian Rim, but the valley will begin to dry out. So as you head out the door, wet roads in spots in the East Valley. Otherwise, rain chances trending down and by this afternoon, a high of 97 in Phoenix. Then tomorrow, more sunshine and of course the triple digits are back with highs in the hundreds through the holiday weekend. Labor Day at this point, bringing us a slight chance for storms, but don't cancel those plans just yet. I don't think it's going to be a washout. We may just see a few storms by the evening hours. Virtual meetings allowed people to stay connected during the pandemic. They've also led to a lot of people getting fired. Apparently a new survey from a market research company found one in four bosses fired an employee because oh. of a, a mistake made during a video conference call. Top reason showing up late to a Zoom meeting, followed by forgetting to unmute a microphone or uh -oh. having bad Internet connections. Other issues, employees having inappropriate usernames. Oh, OK. Ooh, wow. Okay. Check that. 619 here. You know, this really does take the idea of our class pet next level here <laughs> on your bulletin board this morning. If you're a teacher, how about a 1500 pound cow? Sorry, I'm just the messenger here, but it's all thanks to a free online farming experience for Arizona schools. The Discovery Dairy Adopt a Cow program. It's a year long virtual learning program. Classrooms are going to get paired up with a calf from Stotts Dairy in Buckeye and get an inside look at how dairy farming works. So far, so good. And it does include live chats from the farm, activity sheets for the students, and, and this is so cute, an opportunity to write letters to your classroom calf. The deadline is coming up, you guys. It is September 15th to register. You want more information? Just head to discoverydairy.com slash adopt. Bringing agriculture to the classroom. That's today's bulletin board. I like that. I think that's cool. They're so cute. Well, the Phoenix Zoo is welcoming a new baby snake, but the mom hasn't had a mate in her enclosure for 10 years. Okay, immaculate conception for a snake. <laughs> uh, this was last month. Zookeepers found the baby with this Brazilian rainbow boa. Okay, Ooh. so how did it happen? It's a process called parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis literally means virgin creation. Um, so this is a this is a copy of mom. Um, it does happen in reptiles periodically. Um, it, it is rare though. Okay, I still have a lot of questions this morning. Hmm. If you'd like to see these two, mom can be found in the Boa Hut. Baby will be out in the next week or so in the nursery area on the children's trail. How about that? That baby needs to be celebrated big time. Oh, How yeah. About that. It's 621. And you know, my kids talk about this all the time when we stop by after school. Why are they always broken? Still ahead, McDonald's actually getting served with an investigation because of the broken ice cream machines. Lumber prices have been high because of the pandemic. I'm investigator Joe Ducey. There's some good news, but is it good enough for you to start that project? Yo, this is crazy. Yeah, take a look at this. The remnants of Ida spawning a tornado. We're gathering new details on the latest damage caused by this storm. Thanks for watching ABC 15 Arizona, streaming 24 seven on Roku and these streaming devices. So many people can relate to this, the pandemic leading so many of us to at least want to renovate our homes. But all those DIY projects created a surge in prices for supplies and especially so with things like lumber. And all new this morning, the Let Joe Know team shares some relief could actually be around the corner. There was a lot of shortages at the mills. While you were at home social distancing from coronavirus, so were various workers across the country. So there's a lot of issues filling the inventory orders. At the same time, do-it-yourselfers were taking the extra time at home to finish upgrades. 
It created a simple economics problem. Demand for lumber started to increase just as supplies started to drop. During that time, uh, you, you saw a lot of prices continue to, to soar up. Meaning at the store, you were paying close to eight or nine dollars for something that normally costs three or four. But here's some good news. Since peaking in May, prices have started to tumble, dropping 75 percent as of September 1st. Mills have restarted and some have ramped up production and some customers chose to put off projects until prices came down. So the big question, is now the time to buy? Lumber is trading just slightly higher than the average between 2009 and 2019. Prices we checked at major valley stores like Home Depot and Lowe's are coming down. The average price we found for an eight foot two by four is around $3.50. Prior to the pandemic, that average was about 260. So how is this impacting the price of homes? Experts we talked to say the cost to build has gone up 25% in the last six months, but that could change as always, depending on supply and demand. Go to abc15.com slash let Joe know for more ways to save your money. I'm investigator Joe Ducey. If you got a problem, let me know. Oh boy, you need another reason to spend more time on social media? Up next at 630, Facebook's latest plan to keep your face on your phone. And here's a question for you. Should your employer be allowed to mandate that you get vaccinated in order to keep your job? This is a huge debate right now. I'll break down both sides coming up in a live report. And a flash flood emergency in New York City this morning. The historic rainfall covering roads, highways, even flooding subways as well. But is Ida finally done? This is the view most of us in the valley waking up to those clearing clouds, but parts of the Phoenix Metro getting in on some rain and some heavy rain with flood alerts too. I'm breaking down your most accurate forecast as you get ready to head out the door.